there, and welcome to Thingamajigs, the exciting history of mundane things. I am Ben. And I am Danielle. Benjamin. Daniellethy. Do you know what this week is? Of course. It is the 46th week of the year. Lincoln traveled to Gettysburg in 1863. We all know that. That happened this week. The French Revolution, that that began in uh, 1789 this week. The American Revolution also, but in uh, 1775. It's a popular week. Of course I know what week it is. Why do you ask? Okay, but it's also Thanksgiving week. Thanks wedding? Thanksgiving. What's giving? You remember, you remember what every weddings? year? <laughs> Otherwise known as the week that everybody magically remembers that they know how to cook? Not me. The real question is, what is Thanksgiving about? Going to grandma's house. It is true that people travel for Thanksgiving. I think the statistic is it rises like 50% around the holiday. But depending on the American that you ask, they would probably say something like, it's about celebrating a time of gratitude, making sure my mother-in-law is impressed with the food and accommodations, (laughs) or it's about eating a lot. More pessimistic people, like yourself, might say, reluctantly hanging out with your family because everyone expects you to, even though no one wants to, which is not true. Lots of people love spending time with their family. That's a common misconception. No one actually does. Or maybe simply just football. Maybe you have traditions in your family that are decades old, and if deviated from, a curse will befall your descendants for a millennia. Which is probably not true, but you're too scared of your grandma to find out. So what even is the history behind this holiday? When did it start, and does it even have anything to do with turkeys? It has a lot to do with turkeys. If you've ever seen the 2013 cinematic masterpiece, Free Birds, you'll know that the turkeys went back in time to the first Thanksgiving. There's no way that's a real movie. Is that a real movie? Yes, it's a real movie. All right. Well, I know what we're watching this year for our holiday cinematic experience. Can't believe you've never seen the turkeys who went back in time to the first Thanksgiving. These are all questions that we're going to answer here on Thingamajigs. We recognize that this is a sensitive topic, and we will try to keep to the historical facts and steer away from political opinion. To be clear, we don't support genocide. The common consensus is that the first Thanksgiving was between the Native Americans and the Pilgrims. Now, there was a meal that took place between the Wampanoags and the Pilgrims in 1621, But the Pilgrims didn't seem to consider this meal a milestone worthy of historical significance because the only reason we even know about this event is from letters. Specifically, a letter written by Edward Winslow. He was a Mayflower passenger and a leader of the Plymouth Colony. So the first year the Pilgrims were in America was incredibly hard. They brought seeds with them, but the land was too sandy, so their crops withered and died. There was a lot of death. Of the 102 people that sailed, only 52 survived the first year. Those are rough statistics. Yeah, and our, our man Edward Winslow's wife was one of, the, one of the people that did not make it. He remarried. Don't worry. Well, he had to. He had to populate their new land. Yeah, he remarried another woman whose husband died. So I guess you had to find the people whose spouse died and then just get just slip right on in there and act as if nothing had ever happened. The system works. So the only reason they survived that year was because the Native Americans helped them. The Wampanoags taught them how to grow corn and where they could catch food in the unfamiliar territory. The Native Americans saved what was left of these people and the following harvest was plentiful, which was very exciting because it meant that they would survive the winter. Winter at this stage of settling a new place was a death sentence if you were not prepared. So the Pilgrims decided to have a celebration. Now this is when the story that we're taught in middle school branches off from the truth that actually happened that day. So the governor sends out four men to go fowling. Could they have killed some turkey? Absolutely, there were plenty of turkeys out there. But it was just as, if not more likely, that they brought back partridge or duck. Some type of bird. Pigeons. What, you don't have the Thanksgiving pigeon? 
I'm of the belief that we shouldn't eat pigeons. They're like seagulls. Not because they're gross, because they're very cute. I don't find pigeons cute. (laughs) Seagulls are kind of cute. Pigeons, eh, they're kind of ugly. We know at least that some sort of poultry was on the menu, and I, for one, love turkey, so I'm going to pretend that it was turkey while we're making stuff up. I read, I read this whole letter, but I'm only going to give you the quotes of the pieces that matter. So the letter quotes, At which time, amongst other recreations, we exercised our arms. Many of the Indians coming amongst us. Exercise our, our arms is not what you think. <laughs> No, this tells us they were shooting their guns, and some historians say they were displaying a military strength. So they were trying to show off to their new friends. The letter doesn't make it sound hostile, but I don't know, I wasn't there. But what else it tells us is that the Native Americans were not invited as guests. The whole, and the pilgrims invited the Indians for a Thanksgiving dinner to show gratitude for helping them survive the winter, is baloney. That being said, there are some historians who believe that they were invited because of the magnitude of people that showed up. You don't just accidentally gather 90 people. Some say it could have been that the natives heard the pilgrims' gunfire and thought the pilgrims, whom they had a contract of sorts to protect and help each other, were under attack and needed help. But we won't ever know for sure. Because it just wasn't properly documented, and the way that Winslow describes it just isn't very clear. And I don't think the pilgrims were exactly in a position to tell them that they wanted to spend this holiday alone. (laughs) It wasn't a holiday at the time, it was more of a celebration, but you get the point. Also, I like to think that some part of them had to feel like they owed it to the Wampanoags. The Native Americans stayed three days. The letter reads, Whom for three days we entertained and feasted. So they obviously knew they were going to need more food, so the Wampanoags went and killed five deer, and brought them back. So they contributed to the the main course. Three days of feasting is a long time. And to think we bumped it up by a couple of days with our modern Thanksgiving. It's one of the best parts. All the leftovers. Mm, mm -hmm. Got a giant pile of food in your fridge. Somebody's got to eat it. Eating pumpkin pie for breakfast. Ugh. There is nothing that I look forward to more than the day after Thanksgiving where I get to eat whatever's left of the pumpkin pie for breakfast. It is likely that they had lobster, though. He talks about lobster in his letter. Lobster is not very good if you don't have a lot of spices, so I don't know how, I don't know how that went. That's true. How do, you, how do you consume lobster when you don't have spices? Well, they had salt. I guess with the options they had available to them, just a salty lobster probably wasn't that bad. They did a lot of fishing, though, so they probably had fish and maybe some kind of bread. As far as veggies, they grew arugula and spinach, so they had some leafy greens. Later on in the letter, he talks about things people should bring with them on their journey, and one of those things was lemon juice. Makes sense. It's a long boat ride. But the other thing was butter. So you know what they weren't dipping their lobster in? They were using the fat of their dead. Gross. But it makes sense they didn't have any dairy products because it would be three years before the first cows were shipped over. In fact, he went and got one bull and three heifers and brought them back. That has nothing to do with the story, but I read a lot of the letter and I found out very interesting things. It was very intriguing. He did a lot. He did a lot of work. He traveled back and forth a lot. It made some of the other people that ran Plymouth a little little upset because he wouldn't exactly just ask permission he would just go and do things well democracy hadn't been invented yet but he kind of acted as an ambassador for the colonists the letter doesn't say anything else about the feast but he does mention we have found the indians very faithful in their covenant of peace with us very loving and ready to pleasure us we often go to them and they come to us If you read on, there's some stuff that I can tell he thinks he's being nice, but when you you read it, you know, you know they thought they were better than them. Here's Here's a quote for example. So that there is now great peace amongst the Indians themselves, which was not formally, neither would have been but for us. And we, for our part, walk as peacefully and safely in the woods as in the highways in England. 
We entertain them familiarly in our house, and they, as friendly, bestow venison on us. So, like, what, did he think that they weren't doing so hot until they got there? Of course. Anyone who doesn't speak your language is obviously too stupid to learn it, and so they are a lesser creature, as we know. Very high and mighty. He goes on to say, They are a people without any religion nor knowledge of God, yet very trusty, quick of apprehension, ripe-witted. The men and women go naked, only a skin about their middles. Make of that what you will. It's like he goes back and forth between admiring them and belittling them. Oh, was he jealous? I came across this painting from the early 1900s that showed the pilgrims front and center sitting at a grand table of food with just a few natives scattered around the edges. Well, there was one Native American seated at the table. But we know it definitely didn't look like that painting because there was almost double the natives at that feast than pilgrims. But it wasn't just eating. They had some singing and dancing. They played games, which I feel like we can insert into the things we do now between the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and football. Entertainment hasn't changed that much. But I do think that it's important to reiterate that this celebration feast was only described in this letter. It was a one-time event. They had no idea 400 years later people would talk about it, much less reference for a yearly holiday. I'm sure if they would have known that this day would become so famous, they probably would have documented it properly. At least more than this one guy's paragraph that, by the way, didn't even emerge until the mid-19th century. On the other hand, this is why you have to be careful what you write down, because you have no idea what people hundreds of years from now will think is important and take out of context, or in this case, create a story with embellishments that make you look a lot better than what you actually were. What if one of the pages in there was like, oh, Becca was so hot today, crushing on her so hard. When is she going to leave her douchebag boyfriend, Jeff? Jeff isn't cool. I'm way cooler than Jeff. And it just goes back into recounting the stories of the settlers. <laughs> that would be very strange, but I would, I would tell, I would tell him to just wait it out because Jeff is probably going to die. <laughs> Jeff has died of dysentery. I'm reminded of that episode of the Orville where they find an ancient smartphone and on it they find videos of people just living their lives and how interesting they found it because the kind of lifestyle we're living now was so removed from them. What things are we doing and saying now that will be remembered in the year 2400? It's trippy to think about. What of our lives will the distant aliens know of whenever they come and find the wreckage of our once thriving planet? Beyonce. Beyonce? Oh, yeah. Beyonce, the queen of America. They're all going to jam out to Beyonce. I think in the Orville, they, like, worship Dolly Parton or something. <laughs> so if this story of the 1621 feast isn't the first Thanksgiving, then what was? Well, there are lots of first Thanksgivings. In different dimensions? No, unfortunately, all of the things I am about to say happened in this canon. There is one story in 1637 that is particularly brutal, where the colonists massacred the Pequot village with murders into the hundreds. John Winthrop, the governor of Massachusetts at the time, according to his journal on June 15th, 1637, said that there was a day of Thanksgiving kept in honor of their... Massacre? They viewed it more as a win, but yeah. Our triumphant victory over these families. Men, women, and children, yep. The only problem with this is John Winthrop declared Days of Thanksgiving all the time. There was a Day of Thanksgiving declared in 1630 before the mass murders as well because some ships arrived from England safely. Hey, people really like this Thanksgiving thing. Another day of Thanksgiving in 1641 for good success of Parliament in England. Basically, they celebrated any time things went their way. And sometimes the things that went their way were other people's worst day of their life. Or final day of their life. David Silverman, a professor at George Washington University, wrote a book called This Land is Their Land. The Wampanoag Indians, Plymouth Colony, and the Troubled History of Thanksgiving. Now, I have not read this book, 
But this was his answer when someone asked him about the connection between 1637 Day of Thanksgiving and the holiday we know today. There is no question that Connecticut and Massachusetts had a Thanksgiving after those events. A lot of people did. But to draw the connection between that and the modern holiday is untenable. Thanksgivings were a tradition amongst English people, often to mark a gift from God. The quote's usage is taking that particular Thanksgiving out of context. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of Thanksgivings. Some of them were related to military conquests of Indian people, and most were not. So what he's saying is the Thanksgiving with the Native Americans had nothing to do with Thanksgiving. I think what he's saying is the days of Thanksgiving that they observed were called Thanksgiving, but they don't look like the Thanksgiving holiday that we celebrate today. Is this guy still alive? We need to get him as a guest. Regardless, that leaves us again with the question, when was the first Thanksgiving? Well, officially Thanksgiving was made a federal holiday in 1863, when Abraham Lincoln made a presidential proclamation. In part, we can thank Sarah Josepha Hale for the holiday. She was an editor of Godey's Ladies Book, which was a very popular women's reading material at the time. She wrote several poems of her own, though, of which you will know at least one because she is the author of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Was that a poem? Drop that one at Slam Poetry Night. She wrote a book in 1827 called Northwood, where she took an entire chapter to describe a New England Thanksgiving with a roasted turkey placed at the head of the table. But this wasn't just a nice thing to write about. Not many years after this book, she started campaigning to have Thanksgiving established as a national holiday. She could sense the unrest in the country between the North and the South. Civil War was around the corner, and she thought having a day that we all spent together as a nation in Thanksgiving would be unifying. How'd it work out? Well, she wrote to the governors and senators about this idea for two decades. Points for commitment. She was diligent in her quest for Thanksgiving, for sure. She thought that the last Thursday in November should be the day we celebrated it, and she didn't just make this day up. Most likely, she pulled it from George Washington, because in 1789, George Washington declared a day of Thanksgiving on November 26th, which would have been the last Thursday in November. People declared days of Thanksgiving a lot, and usually they were more closely related to days of church. They did a lot of praying and not exactly celebrating. This is probably why she was pushing so hard to have one day of Thanksgiving. She was like, we got to do, there's too many, there's too many Thanksgivings. We need to stop this madness. We get one day. There's something to be said for doing something as a large group. It makes you feel somehow closer to people that you don't even know when you know that we're all on this day celebrating a holiday t- together. Brings you close together like a cog in a machine, or like a sheep in a herd. Finally, in 1863, in the middle of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln makes his presidential proclamation and a new holiday is born. This is sort of when the lore around the quote-unquote first Thanksgiving started. It was a cute story to tell and gave the new holiday old roots that felt good, even though it wasn't true. And even though it was built on the bloody backs of Native Americans. There was one small little hiccup. Even though it was understood that it would take place on Thursday, every president had to declare the event each year. And they did do it every year except in 1939 and 1940, when Franklin Roosevelt changed it to the third Thursday in November. Why? uh, Well, it was the Depression, and he thought that moving the date back a week would allow the merchants an additional week of uh, Christmas shopping. He thought it would boost the economy. But oh my gosh, the people lost their minds. Half the nation celebrated on the third week. The other half celebrated on the fourth, like normal. People started calling it Franksgiving for for Franklin Roosevelt. (laughs) Communist government was thrown around a couple times in newspapers. We really love... Throwing around words like that. Glad nothing's changed. The people didn't know the president was going to do this, and they were angry. In their defense, 
parades and football games have to be moved around. Football has been taking place on Thanksgiving since 1876. And I don't know if you know this, but football culture is very weird. They have a lot of superstitions. You cannot just be moving dates around. So after this, Congress decided in 1941 to make it the law of the land so the citizens could get their panties out of a knot that Thanksgiving would take place on the fourth Thursday of every November without fail. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is a huge deal. It's been happening in New York since 1924. Do people still care about that? I care very deeply. I think the people that live in New York do not care, though. <laughs> Although they have a ton of people that show up every year, but I, I know some people that live in New York and they're like, Mleh. the two days that I definitely don't leave my house is Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve. <laughs> but there's a lot of people there, so I don't think they have problems filling their streets. They actually took the idea of Thanksgiving Day Parade from another store that had one in Philadelphia. It was called Gimbel's or something. We don't remember it because Macy is queen. At the time, though, it was called the Macy's Christmas Parade because it was supposed to be the launch of the Christmas shopping season, but having a Christmas parade on Thanksgiving is pretty upstaging to Thanksgiving. They do still have Santa Claus on a float who goes down the street. If we're being honest, Thanksgiving doesn't deserve its own parade. I think they got it right the first time. I've said this before. Thanksgiving is just practice for Christmas. Unfortunately, I have to be a good, I want to say reporter, but this is not reporting by any means. I'm going to say information communicator. I have to be a good information communicator and tell you that at the end of the parade, they just let their giant helium balloons go. There's black and white footage of humongous balloons being taken up into the air. Think of the sea turtles. They thought that they would be in the air for like four or five days and then they would come down. I don't know why they thought that that was okay, but they were like, yeah, it's just going to float around for four or five days and then they'll, they'll come back down. But you know what else is in the sky? Superman. The thing that's before Superman. Pigeons. Just safe planes. So a small passing airplane snagged a rogue balloon and almost crashed. After that, they decided that releasing them was a bad idea. The last time they released the balloons like that was in 1932. At least we have footage of it. You know how much those things cost? They would not be happy if they had to let them go now. That's a good point. I'm surprised they weren't storing them because we store them now. We use them every year. It's always a big deal when one of the regulars gets retired. I think I remember them making an announcement during the parade if the balloon they are featuring on screen will be retired that year. If you're interested, Macy's has a list of retired balloons you can find on their website, macysthanksgiving.fandom.com. They're all stored in a Tootsie Roll factory in New Jersey. Why a Tootsie Roll factory? No idea. Why New Jersey? New Jersey is where New York puts everything they don't want. Hey now, New Jersey is allegedly where the Bob's Burger Belcher family lives. And for that reason, New Jersey is precious. It's a good thing they are reusing them because I feel like a lot of resources go into those balloons and it seems like a pretty big waste. Well, they're not. They're not worthless. During World War II, those balloons were repurposed towards the rubber that was needed for the war effort. They subsequently had to replace all of them because they all got smashed. But, you know, that giant Donald Duck balloon is a war hero. Also, what about the helium? Helium is a non-renewable resource. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is the second in line for the most used helium, only behind the government. (laughs) They need to just start filling them with hydrogen, like the Hindenburg. I was about to say, going to blow up. That's going to be an interesting... You know Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is shot live. It would definitely make watching it much more exciting. Be on the edge of your seat. (laughs) Which one is going to clip that light pole? (laughs) They have them every year, but wind is a huge factor with these, these basically kite balloon things. They have to pull them down sometimes and just wait it out until the wind dies down. Those things are huge and heavy, and if you don't have enough people holding them down, you are going to get carried away. But what a way to go. 
soaring through the skies, hanging on a Garfield for dear life. So that's it for Thanksgiving. I think the consensus from most Native Americans today is enjoy your family, have a good holiday, but don't forget why you are celebrating this day. You owe us for this turkey dinner that you're having. Thanksgiving's such a stupid holiday. (laughs) It has a terrible history, and it's not fun to celebrate. We really need to just erase it. I don't think that would be a good idea because I think the the biggest deal is people celebrating the holiday and not recognizing why they're celebrating it. So I think if we just struck it from the record altogether, not only would you be striking the holiday itself, but you'd also be erasing what the Native Americans had taken from them for you to eat your green bean casserole. We change it from Thanksgiving to a day of mourning. There is a national day of mourning. On, it takes place on Thanksgiving, and it coincides with unthanksgiving that happens on Alcatraz, where they recognize the egregious actions taken towards the Native Americans. Well, good. We're halfway there. We just need to get rid of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving can be a very emotional day. I almost cried when watching a video of a Vietnam vet talk about how they had been out in the bush for weeks with no hot food, but on this Thanksgiving, they had choppers bring in all kinds of food and pies, and they even had choppers bring in satellite phones for the men to call home. They each got three minutes to talk to their family. So that's Thanksgiving. It's a complicated day. I know it's easier to just believe the fairy tale of the pilgrims and the Native Americans coming together because they loved each other so much and they helped each other, but probably best if you just eat your turkey in silence. Until your uncle chimes in with how coal power is the future and it'll be a cold day in hell that this country sees a woman president. It's another reason to remove Thanksgiving. Gotta invite the sides of the family that you know nobody really wants to invite. Holidays do have a way of reminding you where you come from. (laughs) For better or worse. Should we answer the question from the beginning of the podcast, what does Thanksgiving mean? I don't know. I think it's a question you'll have to answer for yourself, but if someone asked me, then I think I would say that the Thanksgiving that we celebrate today is the Thanksgiving that Sarah Hale advocated for so diligently. And that was inspired by the disconnection that she saw in the country because of the rising civil war. And I think that's a feeling we can all identify with today due to the political and social climate we find ourselves in. So yeah, I would say that Thanksgiving is about reminding ourselves that no matter where you've been or where you've come from, we are a united nation and we all have things to be grateful for. What was your Thanksgiving like growing up? Well, for some reason, we always put on our fanciest clothes. My family always tried to be very fancy on Thanksgiving. Our Thanksgivings were very casual, and uh, they basically just set all the food out on the kitchen table, and it was kind of like a Thanksgiving buffet. I would be interested to see some statistics on how people eat their Thanksgiving food, if if it is leaning more towards a buffet-style throughout America, or if there's any families who sit around a table every year. My guess would be that it's getting more and more casual. Not as many people even have a formal sit down at a table for dinner time, let alone Thanksgiving. I don't know. I am a messy eater, and I require a table. I cannot sit on the couch and eat. I will make a mess. Not sure what kind of PSAs we can give for Thanksgiving other than that, uh, Cooking utensils and appliances are dangerous. How many house fires are caused by uh, frying turkeys that are frozen? (laughs) The National Fire Protection Association reports that fires caused by deep fryer accidents result in more than $15 million in property damage each year. Approximately 60 people get injured by deep fryer fires, and 5 people die from these fires. So you know who agrees with you that Thanksgiving should be eradicated? Insurance companies. (laughs) It's good. I've got I've got the money behind me. I've got the lobbyists. I'm going to make this happen. Yeah, make sure you know how 
your appliances work. Make sure you follow good safety precautions. Don't leave the gas on. All that good stuff. Don't fry a frozen turkey. In fact, keep water away from the fryer. Maybe try spatchcocking. Gross. Where you take the backbone out of the turkey, right? And then you like smush it down so it cooks evenly. Yeah, I think that's right. Maybe just don't do turkey because turkey's not that good. Blasphemy. I love turkey. Turkey's only worth it if it's fried and the process of frying it is not worth it. What's your favorite Thanksgiving meal? Anything made with sweet potatoes. Any kind of like sweet potato casserole. Mm. My favorite is the sweet potato casserole that my mom usually makes. It's really good. Well, here we are again at the end of the show. Let us know what your favorite Thanksgiving meal is. Or if you have any fun Thanksgiving traditions. Some people do like weird, different stuff. I know someone who their family gets together for Thanksgiving breakfast. And they have a a large breakfast table set out. They skip all of like the traditional Thanksgiving foods and they just do a giant breakfast. Yeah, see, that's fun. You can leave those in the Spotify Q&A page or send us an email, contact at uselist.us. Don't forget to grab a goose and have it for Thanksgiving because it's probably a lot better than a turkey. Maybe try that turgoosin that you've been dreaming of. Thanks for listening. Nah. The pumpkin ran away before Thanksgiving Day. He said you'll make a pie of me if I decide to stay. What is that? <laughs> <laughs>